Welcome back to the WRX STI detailing series on Omni Garage. So it's been about four or five weeks since we've uh, ceramic coated the, um, the paint on the car. So what we'll do today is we are going to jack the car up and we're going to use Crystal Serum Light and ceramic coat the wheels to hopefully make these a bit easier to clean because they are notorious for building up serious brake dust. So what we'll do, we'll loosen up the uh, wheels, we'll jack up the car and we're going to start on the rear today. We're going to lift the car and take those two wheels off, start by cleaning the wheels really thoroughly. Um, including the barrels because they are absolutely filthy um, and then we'll get on to our CSL application. And looking at the condition those lug nuts are in, I'm definitely on the hunt for another um, another set. So if you've got any recommendations of what you would put um, if you were buying new lug nuts on the 2019 STI, let a uh, leave us a comment in the description below, and I'll be sure to check them out. Here we go. First wheel off. So we'll go around, take the other one off, and then we'll start with the decontamination process of the tyres and the wheels. Okay, so we've got the wheel sitting here ready to um, ready to clean off and we're just going to start with the two rear We'll work our way through these before we go back and take the two front off the car um, So we've got brake buster um, mixed up diluted five to one in water here So this is to, um, to really get a good clean on the wheels and um, we're also going to use brake buster straight up as well um, Just to make sure we get a really good clean especially around the area where the lug nuts have been in there uh, But also the barrel I'm probably gonna have to hit that a few times um, and then just for good measure to make sure we get a really good decontamination, we've got Car Pro's Iron X and Tar X. There's no visible tar on these uh, these wheels, um, however they are black, so we're just going to hit them with these just to make sure that we've got absolutely everything off. Um, and what we've done, we've filled up the bucket here, um, and we've got a couple of tools we'll use. So we've got a, a lambskin um, mitt, we also have the Incredi brush flat, and we've got a tyre brush um, and also a brush to clean the, the lugs um, in any of the smaller areas. So we'll rinse these off first, hit them with the um, with the brake buster, and we'll start the cleaning process.
we'll start by cleaning the uh, the tyres here. So we'll also hit these with a bit of brake rust straight up. And as we've seen in the past, if you watch some of our previous videos, this is a tendency to turn really brown on the uh, on the tyres as it's removing dirt. So this is the, um, the Tough Shine brush um, from Obsessed Garage. And I'd highly recommend this. And you can see this straight away, look at that colour. So this is the inside lips, you'd expect these to have never been cleaned because you can't reach them. go too wrong to add this to the arsenal. Look at that colour. Absolutely filthy. So we'll start by cleaning the inside barrel here. We've got the lambskin brush. And it is absolutely filthy. The water running off here course inside there. I've never clayed the inside of a tyre but I wonder if I should have brought a clay bar down to give that a crack. And it's more so just to make sure that when we get to the ceramic coating it sticks nicely so it'll be no different to doing the um, doing the paint on a car. You want to make sure that you've got all the contaminants off the surface to get a really nice bond with the ceramic coating. So we'll give these a clean up and once they are clean we'll see if we do need to hit it with some clay to see if we can get anything else off there because we want that ceramic coating to stick and to stick for a long time. So we've just finished cleaning the inside barrel of both of these. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use the two uh, CarPro, so the Inex and the Tarex. We're just going to hit the wheels with these. Um, let it dwell for a couple of minutes and rinse it straight off so we're not going to agitate anything further uh, just to make sure we've got everything that we can off and it's nice that it's not a windy day out here today because I have used both of these products INX and Tarex in the uh, in the wind and it is not pleasant at all they absolutely stink you don't really want any blow by to your face And it looks like we are going to be casing up water very soon for some more Carpo products because we've got up to the bottom of the barrel for this, um, this bottle of Inex. That's pretty well done. And then at the same time, I'm just going to hit um, Tarex. So I don't know if you meant to mix these two together. I don't really care. We've done the majority of the clean here. Might have failed, um, a failed sprayer on this car pro bottle. These are usually pretty good. So we might not be getting any Tarex out. Here we go, finally atomizing. I don't think that's a fair representation of the car pro sprayer though, because for, for cheap bottles, um, and I mean, this is, you know, I think the cheapest product. That you can get car pro in a 500 mil bottle is um is the clarity glass cleaner and the, the bottles are pretty good so we'll let that sit for a couple of minutes you can already see the iron turning purple inside the wheel barrows there wheel barrels not wheel barrows so we'll let that sit for a couple of minutes and then we'll rinse it off we're not going to agitate anything on there So we're going to rinse these off now. Hope that we've got them cleaned with everything out of these, um, the inside lip of these, these rims. And then we'll let them dry up here while we work our way inside and start to clean the rear calipers while these dry in the sun before we come back to uh, ceramic coat them. So.
clean the uh, the red calipers now. So we'll start on the right hand side of the vehicle here, and this is quite an awkward one because we've got the car up on jack stands inside. So we want to make sure that um, that we don't make too much of a mess, but equally we want to get these clean. So we've put some uh, we've got some rags on the floor here, and we're just going to let everything drip onto those. We might make a bit of a mess, but I'll give it a crack. So we're just going to spray brake buster straight up. Just trying to be quite careful here, not to get it everywhere. And then we've got to slightly damp that wheel brush. We'll use that to start with, just to get as much as we can off the caliper. And this will be the best clean this caliper has ever had because, like I said, those um, 2019 wheels are almost impossible to get behind because of the spoke design on them. So these calipers, generally you can get a little bit of the face of them, but because of the spokes, depending on how you're parked when you're washing the car, is the um, is it's a pretty big impact on the actual result that you get out of the caliper clean. So that's already made a big difference. So what we'll do, we'll go damp our um, damp our brush a bit, and we'll carry on with that. Just trying to agitate every every little bit that we can using our tools before we go in there and start using a little cloth. Because again, preparation's key here. The cleaner we can get this caliper through this process, the easier it's gonna to be to get the ceramic coating to bond nicely with it. So we had to go get a bigger towel because it was making a bit of a mess on the ground the way that we're doing these calipers but we've got a really good clean on this um, this rear caliper and the bits that I'm paying the most attention to is anything that you're going to see um, if, you're, if you're looking from the exterior and um, because you're not going to see the back side so we have given that a bit of a clean uh, but it's really been the main focus on making sure that every little bit of the outside facing bit that you can see behind the wheel is going to be nice and clean so that's pretty much a wrap on cleaning that caliper. We'll, um, we'll dry it up and, um, and move on to the other side. So this is the uh, this, this is the front right tire. And you'll be able to see there just how dirty the caliper is behind the wheel. But also when I was talking about how difficult it is to get behind these spokes to clean depending on how the car's positioned. And then if we come around the rear, That's our clean caliper. So from a distance, almost as good as brand new. Does have a couple of chips out of the top there, unfortunately, a couple of stone chips. And if you look at that caliper versus the front, that is an absolute night and day difference. So what we'll do before we um, before we coat the wheels and the calipers is we're going to use Meguiar's all-purpose cleaner and we're going to hit the inner guard here um, with a bit of this. We're going to agitate it with our uh, with our tire brush um, and we'll finish it off with some Meguiar's hyper dressing and hopefully we'll get a nice um, a nice matte finish in here because this is absolutely filthy again. Cars only travel 10,000 k's but this again is an area that you never ever clean unless you've got an opportunity like this. We're just going to spray a generous amount of the APC in the area here. We'll just start scrubbing with the, uh, the brush. You probably want to be a little bit careful <coughs> because it's um, it is quite potent in, in there. And you're going to get it dripping down on you if you do get too close in. And I guess if you're being too rough with the brush as well, you might flick it around. So you don't want to get that in your face. So be aggressive, but gentle at the same time.
something that will take you all of five minutes from first spray of the APC and actually cleaning it up with a rag. But the difference it's going to make, and even if it's only you who know it's, you know it's there, it's going to be a huge difference in the overall process. You've already taken 10 15 hours to follow all steps of this detail. You may as well take an extra. 20 minutes when you go to all four uh, all four corners of the vehicle doing this. So we'll wipe it down with this rag here now. And it is gonna I don't have to get absolutely everything off. It's just a matter of getting everything that's dripping inside here all cleaned up. And I mean I can see from that that well it's not like brand new plastic in there, it is tenfold better than what we had before we decided to start with us. As easy as that. So what we'll do now is um, we've got the Meguiar's hyper dressing. So this is the first time we've used this. However, in watching some of uh, Matt's videos on Obsessed Garage, what we found is that it is pretty much set and forget. So we'll just spray this on the inner guard here and, um, and we'll leave it and that's all there is to it. Probably my favourite smelling Meguiar's product. Probably second to the Quick Wax. It smells like lollies. Easy as that. We probably will give that a little bit of a, a wipe down. We don't want to remove it, uh, but it is dripping quite heavily in there because it is not on a flat surface. So give it a, a quick wipe down with another cloth. And then that will be the uh, hyper dressing all done. So we're starting on the second wheel now. We've pretty much got time to work halfway around before we have to start removing the product. I do think, I've said it before, I'll say it again, it is so much easier to ceramic coat the paint because you can work in, in squares, you can go panel to panel. Whereas when you're working on the, uh, the wheels here, you've really got to stay organized and know exactly where you're up to making sure that you hit every part of the spoke with the correct part of the uh, of the suede pad too because the product's only really applied to the middle that's the bit that you want to come in contact with the paint and so there, I kind of forgotten where I was up to when I dropped that so I'm just, I think I'm starting doing the same spoke again it's better to it's better to not miss anything and go over something twice. Um, C cell isn't layerable, um, but in saying that, that, that doesn't mean that you can't go over twice within the space of a minute. That means that you can't expect this to cure, um, you know, within that 12 to 24 hour time frame, and then come along and do another coat of it in order to um, to get you know double the, the lifetime out of it um, because C cell won't bond to itself. So ceramic coating or, or at least G Technics. It, it won't bond to itself, you're not going to actually get it to cling. So it's going to be a waste of time and a waste of money, waste of product to try and do this twice. So we'll grab our removal towels. We're about halfway around this wheel. And we just wanting to make sure we get everything off. feeling of using these removal towels once you strain it coated because you can feel instantly just how much slicker the surface is. And this is the whole idea of ceramic coating is to make it as slick as possible. I think it's more uh, why I'm a fan of ceramic coating is more so for the cleaning capability. It means that it's so much easier and um, you know water beads a little bit better or water sheets a bit better to be honest. And um, it means that you don't need as much agitation when you're cleaning. Stuff just doesn't seem to stick the same to it. Actually, it does stick the same, but it comes off way, way easier. So don't expect to put ceramic coat on your paint or on your wheels and, and you know things like this, chips. That's still going to happen. This is not going to protect you from scratches. It's going to make caring for the vehicle a whole lot easier. Um, and yeah, it's going to add a little bit of hardness to the paint, but 
anyone who tries to sell you on ceramic coating because it's scratch resistant, you can call me a BS on that. Carry on working our way around. So I'm just going to follow the exact same process to finish this section here of the wheel. Um, and in the, the next clip, you'll see us working on the calipers. We'll start on the left hand side and get those all ceramic coated as well. We'll come back about 20 minutes later to have a look at this hyper dressing, and it looks absolutely fantastic. So it's been mixed up three to one dilution radio ratio, um, which is what's recommended for a nice satin finish, and it definitely has come up satin. So we haven't had to wipe anything apart from a few of the spots here, just where it was dripping, but that's just dried, dried into a nice satin finish. So well worth the five minutes spent on that corner of the vehicle. And what we're going to do now is we've got the rear caliper, which we've just wiped down using the wheel and tyre tower from uh, Obsessed Garage, um, which he sources from the Rag Company. Um, so this is all ready to go for the ceramic coating. So pretty much the same process as what we applied with the, the wheels. We've got our pad here. We're going to basically apply one line and that'll be enough to get us through this whole uh, this whole caliper it's going to be a little bit difficult just because it's quite intricate with all of the different let that sit for a couple of minutes while we did the other caliper and we're just coming along and just removing this coating now and you'll be amazed you're not going to know what I'm talking about until you actually go and do a ceramic coating yourself but Wiping this off with this towel now compared to dry wiping before the ceramic coating was applied. It is just absolutely amazing how slick it is. This is the whole idea. This is what makes the whole process worthwhile. Just feeling how slick that is. It's going to be so easy to keep this caliper clean compared to, uh, compared to uncoated. Now if it didn't have that nick out of the tops there's a slight nick here and a tiny little one there if those weren't present on the wheels these would look almost as good as brand new Rippo calipers so we're going to head around the other side i'm going to do the exact same process and remove the uh the coating there okay so while the tire is um, still on the ground here we'll, um, we'll dress it up so we're going to use car pros pearl and this is diluted one to one so this is half filled with water and we've also got the CarPro um, applicator pad here. So what I really like about CarPro Pearl is that firstly it lasts a really long time. So I find that um, the wheels look really nice and well dressed in between washes. Um, but also when I'm diluting it one to one, it's really easy to work it into the, um, into the tire lettering and, and any of the crevices on the tires. Because I've found that the only product I've ever used in the past that does an equally good job at, um, at getting good coverage on the tyres will be one of the um, one of the spray based ones. And as soon as you start spraying stuff on your tyres, you get it all through the rim, um, and, and it makes more of a mess than it's worth. So that's all um, all done there. What we do is we'll just use that wheel and tyre towel again. All I want to do is just buff off any excess product here because what I want is this to be a nice satin finish. I definitely don't want a glossy look or a wet look to the tyres, I just want it to be nice and satin. Easy as that, it takes about a minute to dress the tyre. So we'll lift this up now. And we'll also take this opportunity to check the tread before we pop it back on the car, given we've got really easy access to all four tread measuring points. So if you haven't seen this yet, this is the PCL digital tread depth gauge and there'll be a link in the top right hand corner of your video right now if you want to have a look at that in a bit more detail. But we'll just check and see what tread we've got across the car here. So we've got seven, let's check that one again. Zero that out. So 7.11. Seven point seven nine. 7.73 and 7.38 so fairly happy with that the um, the tread wear is pretty even across this we'll line it up and put it back on the car so we'll just get our tread pattern our bolt pattern lined up 
happier. And while I love the style of these 2019 wheels, this is when I'd appreciate a uh, 2015 STI PBS wheel, which is forged to make this a little bit easier. Wouldn't say easy as that, but I made that look a bit awkward. What I found with the uh, lug nuts, so these are the stock lug nuts off this STI, and if you've seen a new STI, these come black from the factory. So I try to give them a bit of a wash there, and everything's just peeling off them. So I am in the market for some new lug nuts. If you have any recommendations at all of what you would pair with a 2019 STI, drop a, uh, drop a suggestion in the comments below. I'm open to um, pretty much anything to change these out because these look terrible. So we're just hand tighten these. We're gonna come along and just um, get them a, a bit tighter before we lower it down. I just wanna make sure that you do work in a star pattern here as well. Ready to bring it down now, and we can talk it up. Just raise the car up a little bit, just uh, about a centimeter. We'll pull the uh, pull the jet sands out now. So we're all ready to lower. here this is set to 120 newton meters which is what was recommended in the owner's manual of the STI so we'll torque all of these wheels down now all of these nuts So there we go, that's, uh, that's the process for taking the wheels off, giving them a really good decontamination, ceramic coating them, checking the tread, dressing them, popping them back on, um, and the same done with the calipers, and obviously the, uh, the inside of the wheel arch with hyperdressing. So that is our finished product for the rear two, um, the rear two tires, wheels, and calipers on the car. And I'm really happy with the result, how that turned out should make cleaning these wheels a whole lot easier going forward. So what still needs to be done, which we'll do off camera, is the front wheels on the car. And if you have a look, keep that in your mind, how that back one looks. This is what they looked like before. So this is after about five, 600 kilometers of driving. You can just see the dirt build up on there. And in particular, when you come around to the caliper, it is absolutely filthy. And that's what you'd expect. I'm going to expect the back tyres to look like this um, once I've driven five or 600 kilometres, but it's going to be the ease of cleaning them. It should make it uh, a whole lot easier to, to take care of this car. So that's all for this, uh, this part of the series. In the next video, we'll be looking at some of the interior detailing. So we'll be dialing in the leather, um, all of the trim, um, and basically anything that is on the inside of the STI. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.